Hello, Wonder Hussy here. Time for another installment of Death Valley Life. <laughs> and we've been really busy at the Death Valley compound this week. Uh, not only are we getting ready for Christmas, but we're actually headed into town today to work on our next project, which is replacing these ugly ass doors. You know what I mean? This front door is just ugly. It's some kind of gross, fake, plywood-looking finish. It's this hideous dark brown color. It doesn't even fit snugly. My sister had to do all that work with all that weather stripping to try to keep the dust and the bugs out. This door's gotta go. Oh, wait, hold on. <gasps> Look, Santa Claus is at Home Depot. And he's a veteran. Veteran Santa Claus. Oh my God, you never know who you're gonna run into at the Pahrump Home Depot. <laughs> Ugh. Oh my gosh. Ordering new doors is way more complicated than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, our door is a standard size, so that's a plus. But unfortunately, they won't send their installation guys out to where we live because it's right across the state line. And well, unfortunately, there aren't any cities anywhere on our side of the state line where we can go to another Home Depot, uh, unless we drive two hours to Barstow. And that's not happening. So it looks like we're gonna have to find a handyman. <sighs> anyway, time to take a break from all these headaches and go get some lunch. Oh, wait, before we go to lunch, I'm gonna stop by this place called the Barn Goddess that we read about. It's a metaphysical new age shop and they sell cauldrons. Now, unfortunately, she's closed today. Can you see anything? I don't see any cauldrons. No cauldrons? Well, Might have to I order it. Oh, wow, that does look like a fun store though. Lots of sage. Huh, well, I guess we're gonna have to come back and get our cauldron another day. Okay, on to lunch. Okay, we're gonna go to this French bakery for lunch. I went here the other day when I was in town just because I needed to buy some bread. And I, the last thing I was expecting in the town of Pahrump, Nevada, is a <laughs> genuine, authentic French bakery. But guess what, they have one. And the woman who runs it is so chic and beautiful. When I came in, she was wearing this really smart little red suit and high heels, all perfectly made up. She looked like Princess Diana. In a French bakery, in a strip mall behind the adult superstore in Pahrump. Oh my God, yum. Hello. Hi. Hello. Good, we're hungry. <laughs> Well, since we're in town anyways, might as well make a pit stop at Wally World. Ugh. Okay, got some groceries, looked at doors, checked my mail, had lunch. Now it's time to go back to the ranch and, well, get to work on more projects. Anyway, back here at the ranch, uh, I had somebody that wanted me to talk about how we get our drinking water since we do live in one of the driest places on earth. Well, we actually have two wells, but we don't drink the well water because it has high levels of arsenic. And I don't know if that's naturally occurring or if it has anything to do with all the mining activity that took place in this area over the years. But either way, the guy that we bought the house from said he had the water tested in Vegas and they told him that it was okay to drink it wouldn't kill you uh, but you probably shouldn't drink it every day and people who did grow up in this area drinking the well water supposedly got really stained teeth from doing so and so for years well unless you had enough money to install a reverse osmosis system 
you really had no other option than to drive all the way into Pahrump to get drinking water. And that's like 35 miles each way. So depending on gas prices, well, that could be a pretty significant expense, especially considering there's a lot of people in this area who are living below the poverty line, uh, especially elderly people. Well, I guess the situation finally came to the attention of state officials about mm, 10 years ago. And it was kind of like a PR nightmare. Like, here's this woebegone, godforsaken little desert community in a lonely forgotten corner of California, the land of plenty, where folks didn't have clean drinking water. So, the county actually built a community well where you can buy filtered drinking water for 25 cents a gallon without having to drive all the way to Pahrump. And yeah, it is still kind of a pain in the butt, especially considering, well, I used to live in Vegas and just drink the water right out of my tap, which come to think of it, probably wasn't a very good idea because well, Las Vegas tap water is one of the worst in the entire country, but I was lazy and I couldn't be bothered to go buy drinking water. So even though this is a pain, well, it's kind of a blessing in disguise because it's forcing me to drink better water. One, two, three, four, five. So yeah, it is kind of a pain in the butt, even though we do have enough jugs to get about 50 gallons at a time, which is enough to last my sister and me, when it's just the two of us, about a month, since we're able to use our well water for washing and showering and doing dishes and stuff like that. We just need enough for drinking and cooking. And in a weird way, having to tote my own drinking water is kind of cool because it forces me to be more mindful of my water consumption. Okay, back when I lived in Vegas, I didn't think anything of it. I would just turn on the tap if I was thirsty or if I wanted to water my lawn or wash my car or wash my dog. I mean, we definitely take water for granted in the United States, especially those of us in the Western United States. You might not realize this, but over half the entire United States is considered a desert. And this was first noted by the famous explorer John Wesley Powell. If you ever heard of John Wesley Powell, he was a Civil War veteran who lost one of his arms in the war, but that didn't stop him from being, I think he was the first white man to explore the entire Colorado River, all the way from the headwaters in Colorado, all the way down to Baja, California. I mean, he was one of the first white people to explore the Southwest and the West in general. And well, in his travels, he noted there was a stark difference once you passed uh, the 100th meridian, which is basically a vertical line that runs, uh, well, roughly north, south through the United States, kind of around where the prairie begins, like around Iowa. Well, if you think about it, the country east of that line is pretty green and lush and everything west of that line is relatively brown and arid. But land speculators, railroads, and politicians convinced people to head west and homestead anyways, because, well, back then they had, well, sort of a theory or maybe more of a political slogan uh, that was rain follows the plow, which basically meant, well, it's kind of like, if you build it, they will come. If you go out there and plow the land, even if it's a desert, well, if you plow it, the clouds will soon follow and well, next thing you know, the West will be just as lush and green as the East. Well, John Wesley Powell tried to stop this movement or at least slow it down and get people to rethink it. Um, I guess he was for settling the West as long as it was done responsibly and settlements were organized around water sources and watersheds. So that way the local residents would be responsible for their own water management and water use. But I guess he was just seen as an old fuddy-duddy who was just getting in the way of progress because people wanted land and they wanted it now. But Powell did have a really interesting quote that I guess he delivered in a speech he gave to some farmers and land developers back in 1893. All the way back in 1893, John Wesley Powell said, I tell you, gentlemen, you are piling up a heritage of conflict and litigation over water rights, for there is not enough water to supply the land. He said this back in 1893. Way back in 1893, he could already see what was going to happen. And well, unfortunately, no one wanted to listen to him back then. 
but they sure are listening to him now. I mean, look at Lake Mead. If you've seen a picture of Lake Mead in the last few years or Lake Powell, they're being drained dry by people like me living in Las Vegas, blasting their taps day and night, not thinking about a damn thing. Anyway, this well is really interesting because there's this little newsletter hanging here that I guess they put out once a month that just talks about the well. That's right, there's an entire newsletter dedicated just to this well, which I feel like is kind of like what John Wesley Powell was talking about when he was when he wanted local residents to be responsible for their own water usage and water management. Remember, he was advocating settlement of the West only in areas around water sources and in watersheds. And you might think, well, you're out here in the middle of this desert. There's no water source or watershed. Well, you'd be wrong. We actually have the Amargosa River that flows through here, and it's above ground in a bunch of places, and it's underground in even more places, and there's, there's plenty of water below the surface here, and that's where this uh, well water comes from. But according to this uh, newsletter, apparently uh, this kiosk was intended to be self-funded just from the quarters and dollars that people put in to buy uh, water, but that, that's not enough to maintain it. Um, apparently there's more uh, to the maintenance of it than just well, keeping the building running. I guess uh, the water has to be tested every month and uh, the state doesn't pay for that, which doesn't make any sense to me. And according to this newsletter, uh, the only way they even finished the last fiscal year in the black is they, um, they raised donations from the community. So people around here definitely take their water very seriously. Anyway, everything is harder out here. We don't just have to tote our own drinking water. We also have to pick up our own mail at the post office since there's no home delivery. And we have to bring our own trash to the dump since there's definitely no trash service. And there's no public sewer system out here either. We have a septic tank, which we're about to get pumped for the very first time. <laughs> uh, the guy who sold us the house said he hadn't had this pumped in like 12 years, <laughs> and he didn't pump it before he sold the property to us, which I thought was kind of weird, but well, I'm not sure what's usual in that situation, so whatever. We're getting it pumped now. Oh, and by the way, water crisis what water crisis? <laughs> of course, the one day of the year that we have the septic pumped is the one day of the year it happens to dump rain. We're in the middle of a pretty gnarly storm. Check it out. Well, there it is. The lid is broken into three pieces, but I guess he's just gonna put all three pieces back together and so cover it back up and hope for the best. Ah, this went from being a show to a storm. are so cold. My socks are so wet. <sighs> that was extremely unpleasant. And I'm not even talking about the smell because believe it or not, that really wasn't that bad. It was more the miserable freezing cold weather. I mean, I'm telling you, it hardly ever rains in Death Valley let alone like that. And of course, the one time it has a dump rain like that, it started exactly when the septic guy got here, and then it sort of let up as soon as he was finishing. I guess you call that Murphy's Law. But 
the real bummer was the fact that that one lid was cracked into three pieces and then uh, there was no lid on the other opening. It was just covered with a piece of rotted plywood. And all of this despite the fact that we did get a septic inspection before we bought the house from that same exact guy and he didn't turn up any of these issues back in, well, I guess that was like late May. And I don't mean to disparage that guy because he was actually really cool, really nice. He did a great job cleaning out the septic tank. And well, as regards his inspection in his defense, he did say that when he dug it up back in May, that lid wasn't cracked. So somehow it got cracked in the intervening, what, seven months? And then as part of the inspection, he said they don't typically dig up the other opening as well. So he didn't know that that was just covered with a piece of plywood. But if my sister and I had known, well, yeah, that would have made a kind of a big difference. You know, we would have mentioned it to the seller at the very least and maybe got a few thousand dollars off the price of the house. You know, the more I think about it, the more I feel like we might have been taken advantage of. Anyway, thankfully Jim was there and he watched everything and he seemed to think we'd be fine just putting pieces of plywood over both openings and then just covering it over with dirt. And then, well, you're supposed to have the tank pumped every five years, I guess. So next time we have the tank pumped five years from now, we can get some pieces of metal and put those over the opening instead. But <laughs> it should be fine until then. <laughs> I guess it's a case of all's well that ends well. And speaking of Jim, you might have noticed that the septic guy's truck was parked in the space where Jim's trailer used to be. And that's because, well, that's because Jim knew the septic guy was going to need to back his truck up there, so he moved his trailer. But also because, as I mentioned in my vlog last week, Jim is getting ready to move on to greener pastures. That's right, he's got itchy feet, he wants to find new adventures. And who can blame him? It'll be sad to look down the hill and see the empty space where his trailer used to be, but I'm happy that I was able to help him out uh, in exchange for all the help he's given my sister and me. And besides, not to worry, we still have Terry. Our good old buddy Terry the electrician who's been helping us with all our electrical projects. <laughs> well, Terry actually came in handy for a totally unrelated purpose this past week. That's right. This week, we also shot all the photos for my 2022 calendar. Woo! You know how every year I like to do a kind of sexy, cute, fun pinup calendar? Uh, well, this year it was kind of easy because uh, I happened to be lucky enough to have a photographer living with me in my house. That's right. In addition to being a licensed electrician, our good old buddy Terry is also a really good photographer. And we kind of made it a household affair. So Terry took the photos and my sister came along on the shoots with the, to hold the reflectors and help with hair and makeup and wardrobe and craft services. Okay, she brought hot cocoa to a couple of the locations. Cause it took like three days to shoot the photos. I mean, we went all over the desert in these parts to do this calendar. We even brought the Christmas tree all the way out to the sand dunes to do the December photo. So my sister brought hot cocoa to keep us toasty. In fact, on the last day of the shoot, we kind of had a like a little wrap party. We had a little campfire in the desert with hot cocoa and Baileys and oh gosh it was just a ton of fun and I submitted the photos to the calendar website and guess what? It's already up for sale as we speak. I'll put the link to it in the description. So if you're interested, you can head on over and stuff your stocking or the stocking of someone you love or care about. Anyway, here's a sneak peek at one of the photos. <laughs> That's actually one of my favorite photos from the whole shoot uh, because it goes back to something I was saying in a video a few weeks ago. Uh, which was something to the effect that, oh gosh, even though life can be tough and things aren't always easy, nothing is insurmountable if you just pull on your superhero boots and your cape. Because yeah, it's definitely not the easy life we've chosen out here. But as the famous, beautiful 60s actress Jane Birkin supposedly said, who wants an easy life? It's boring. Well, my life is anything but boring. <laughs>